वेलकम व्यूअर्स आई एम ममता टुडे विल बी डूइंग चैप्टर टू सेल्फ एंड पर्सनैलिटी इन टुडेज लेक्चर विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ह्यूमनिस्टिक अप्रोच एंड विल बी डिस्कसिंग द पर्सनैलिटी असैसमेंट नाउ लेट्स लुक एट द फर्स्ट कॉन्सेप्ट द ह्यूमनिस्टिक अप्रोच नाउ दिस अप्रोच इज बेसिकली गिवन बाय कार्ल रॉजर्स एंड अब्राहम मैसलो दीज टू साइकोलॉजिस्ट were working on principles of human growth and trying to understand a very positive aspect of human personality unlike freud they talked about and emphasized on growth oriented principles let's look at their theory now the basic premise of this theory according to carl rogers is fully functional person now fully functional person indicates a motivating force for personality development where people try to express their potential their capability and their talent to the fullest extent possible same concept was talked about by abraham maslow as self actualizing person very important concept from the exam point of view means exactly the same thing actualizing your highest level potential starting from the basic physiological approach fulfilling the basic physical needs and then moving on to growth related concept of self actualization so actualizing and attaining the highest level potential for instance mother teresa was actualized with helping instinct also mahatma gandhi was actualized with non violence so that was their highest potential attained in that particular area such people are very humorous they have a natural sense of humor they also are very spontaneous they are also working for the masses because they have overcome their own selfish motives so they look at the larger welfare such are the needs and the characteristic of self actualized people now assumptions that the humanist talked about were basically that behavior is goal directed and worthwhile and people are innately good and always choose self actualizing behaviors so goal directed again we understand the fact that every behavior has a purpose has a target has a purpose to be attained also people are humane people are good naturally they are born as good and they should be respected as a human being with their thoughts and their feelings the concept of self was emphasized by carl rogers who believed that real self and ideal self are the two aspects Now the real self is something that actual me is there my own self concept the ideal self is the outside experience something that is influenced by people around me so suppose i believe that i'm a very honest person outside i'm given the message that you are not working in a sincere manner so in this case there'll be a clash between the real me what i think i am self concept and the outside me which is the ideal self or the experience the more the two concepts overlap the better is the human adjustment according to carl rogers so more adjustment congruence balance in personality is basically determined by the closer the two concepts of real me and ideal me are or self concept and experience are what i think about myself and what others tell me about me now moving on from here we have the concept of self esteem and society if society gives me a positive feedback if other people around me are positive towards me accept me the way i am i will have a higher self esteem when a person is not accepted given a lot of embarrassment rejections the self esteem will be low so this is the relation between society and self esteem Let's move on to the second proponent of humanistic approach Abraham Maslow's main theory. Now here there's a need hierarchy theory that Abraham Maslow talked about and emphasizing on that his major concept of self actualization. Now he talked about self actualization as a state in which people have reached their full potential. This was a very optimistic view of human nature. where he talked about starting from the basic needs for example food and shelter that's a basic need after that need is fulfilled we move on to the next need which is security need safety and security and then we want to affiliate and attach to people that is another need that we have then he talked about the self esteem needs and the self actualization needs 
Let's move on to the next topic, personality assessment. Very important topic from the exam point of view. Here we basically try and understand the concept of assessment, which is basically to predict human behavior by measuring it through the use of these methods. We'll be covering three approaches under this. The first technique talks about the self-report measures. Now the self-report measures is basically dealing with the paper pencil test where I as a person am supposed to report my own experiences. Now here these techniques are very very structured. There's a very clear objective measurement where proper quantitative scoring is done, a score is obtained. So personality, for example, I'm trying to measure a variable or a component of extrovert versus introvert. So somebody who is socially outgoing and the other person who is within themselves. So extroverts, suppose a person gets a score of value of nine, considered to be very, very extrovert. The other value is for the introvert. So that is what the numbers are depicted here. Objectivity is structured. The stimuli that I'm measuring, the it, a stimuli is in the form of questions that you answer about your own self. That is a structured measure. The quantitative me measure, which is the number that you obtain, which tells you what is your score in comparison to other people around you. It's very, very conscious about the measurement. So it is not considering the past. It's not considering the unconscious. It is only measuring the conscious aspect about your personality. Now, this theory is based on the trait approaches, which help us identify the various traits of personality. Those traits are being measured here. Then also it talks about, although it deals with very scientific measurement, very systematic and objective measurement of personality, but two drawbacks it is having. Now, these two drawbacks are very important again from the exam point of view. One is social desirability, which basically means, suppose I am doing a questionnaire, having a question about my personality. Now, I will keep thinking in that questionnaire, what will other people think about me if I answer this as a yes or I answer this as a no. For instance, there's a question, do you like going out to parties? Now, to that question, suppose I want to mark the question no, the thought in my mind will be, if I mark a no, people think I am not normal. So with that, it comes into the negative of social desirability, where I am marking my own self, but I am considering what will other people think about me. So my answers are determined by others' reactions. The second drawback is known as acquiescence. Now acquiescence basically means, suppose I am writing down the answers in the checklist, now the checklist that we have here is like suppose I'm marking these particular answers. Now here I happen to mark all answers as yes. So when I'm happening to mark all answers as yes in the same direction, thinking that at least some answers will be correct out of these. So then it is a problem of acquiescence, marking the same kinds of answers all throughout. Okay, now when we talk about these self-report measures, we basically have three major tests to cover here. The first test and the most important one from the practical point of view is MMPI, Full Form Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory. Now this test was developed by Hathaway and McKinley. A very good test, very comprehensive test to assess and diagnose mental disorders. So not just for personality assessment, it's so comprehensive that it measures a person on 10 scales. Eight scales are normal mental illnesses and two scales are for normal personality, for example, introvert, extrovert or masculine, feminine. Now this test has again the checklist of true false answers and the 10 subscales are basically talking about the various mental illnesses. For instance, it covers depression, a very common word, and also it covers mania. Mania is basically somebody who is very excited, very energetic, always having a very high and a good mood. That is mania, the opposite of depression. Then we have an Indian adaptation of this test, which was given by, in, which was developed in Jodhpur rather, 
it has 100 items as compared to MMPI, which has close to 600 items, that is 567 items. Now, the Jodhpur multiphasic inventory having 100 items was developed by Malik and Joshu. The second test that we have is EPQ. Now, when you look at the test EPQ, it basically assesses three dimensions. It talks about the extrovert introvert category. Apart from that, it covers the neurotic versus emotionally stable category. And the third aspect it deals with is psychotism. Now, introvert, extrovert, outgoing, and socially withdrawn. Neurotic and emotionally stable deals with the social anxiety or dealing with the stresses. And the third level is psychotic, which was added from MPI. MPI did not have psychotism. It had the first two components. But EPQ, Ising Personality Questionnaire, developed by the same author, H.J. Ising, had an add-on of psychotism which basically talks about people who are antisocial, people who are not having a conscience, people who are very, very rude to others, people who are unhumane. Such people are psychotic by nature versus sociable. This was the third component which was added and this questionnaire came out to be having 90 items. Now, this also measures 32 personality traits, the sub-traits of these three major categories. Let's move on to the last one, which is 16 personality factor theory. Now, 16 personality factor test was given by Cattell. Raymond Cattell developed this test. Now, as the name suggests also, this test has 16 variable in personality which is measured, the 16 opposite of the traits which were measured. Now, Cattell started with factor analysis as a concept. Factor analysis through that, it was a statistical technique in which he understood and you know cut down the factors let's say from a large number of personality factors to only 16 versus 16 that is total 32 factors 16 positives and 16 negatives now ultimately you develop your own 16 personality values and you get to know which major personality values you have the 16 values now these have declarative statements along with a set of given alternatives it measures 16 personality factors and it is also a very comprehensive test. The best feature about this test is that it gives you an idea about not just personality but also helps you with your career guidance, vocational exploration, occupational testing. So not just personality, it also covers the career assessment, which areas you are good at as a person, what qualities you have. For instance, if I am a socially outgoing person, the career suited for me will be mass media, mass com. If I am a creative person, the career that can be suited for me are advertising. So it covers very comprehensively the major career areas linked with personality. Let's summarize today's lecture. We covered the major humanistic approach, very important from the exam point of view. Then we moved on to assessment of personality under which we covered the self-report measures. That's about it for today. In the next class, we'll be covering the projective techniques and the behavioral techniques. Thank you.